Hey guys, this is John from US Dash Camera. Today you got a new review on the Zenfox T3. Now Zenfox is a new brand. Uh, it is based in China, I believe. At least that's where these are manufactured. Now uh, they did reach out to me and asked if I would like to review this. So for full disclosure, they did send this out to me for free. Um, this is uh, another three-channel dash camera. I reviewed the Vantrue N4 recently, which is the first three-channel dash camera I've reviewed. And overall, it was a pretty positive review. Um, I'm not always a big fan of the suction cup type dash cameras, but this one really interested me because it's got this uh, wedge design. So this does have some pretty nice features. Besides the infrared camera, of course, it does have Quad HD for the main camera, which is 1440p, and then the other two cameras are 1080p. 30, they're all 30 frames per second. And uh, all of these are Sony image sensors. The uh, main one, uh, I'll throw up a screen on the image sensors, but I know the main one is a Sony Starvis image sensor, which is generally good for nighttime. And this one does have Wi-Fi, which I really like because the uh, the Vantrue N4 didn't have Wi-Fi. The N4 did have a screen, but what's nice about Wi-Fi, which we'll talk talk about more later, is that it allows you to change your settings, and, but also transfer files or videos to your phone wirelessly. Of course, this is a camera that would be great for Uber, Lyft, or you know other type of ride-sharing services because that rear camera is going to be able to record what's going on inside of your car so if a passenger were to assault you or something you'd have video evidence of that so that's really awesome so let's take a look at the actual camera itself so as I said the front camera is down here at the bottom and this does swivel so it gives you quite a bit range of motion and it's going to install onto a little plate like this What's nice is they do actually give you two of these. So this is similar to how the Viafo cameras mount to a plastic plate. And then with the rear or the in cab camera with the infrared that's at the top and you can tilt this up and down. What's nice about this design is you can install it high up on your window so this will be just at the top looking down at everyone in the car. And it might keep it a little more hidden compared to cameras like the Vantrue N4. Here we got the menu, which uh, it's just the typical dash camera menu. A lot of cameras out of China use this generic menu system. You'll notice like the Viafo cameras and a lot of other Chinese cameras, the menu looks exactly the same. Of course, there's some little different features in here. Now this camera does have a parking mode, but it is not a buffered parking mode like Viafo's advanced parking mode or Thinkware and Blackview's more advanced automatic buffered parking mode, which means if you turn the parking mode on and you're parked, it switches to parking mode and when it senses an impact, it starts recording. Those more advanced ones with buffered recording, when it senses an impact or motion, it'll record 10 seconds prior to that impact or motion and then several you know 10-15 seconds after which uh, means you don't miss the incident you capture the whole event so if you're looking for parking mode I don't think this is really a, uh, a camera you should look for if parking mode is really important to you it does offer a low frame rate option and a um, low bit rate option too though but you do have to manually turn that on so here on the side you can see the micro SD card slot it takes up to 256 gigabyte memory cards and since it's three channels I would highly recommend getting the biggest card you can afford. I recommend the Samsung Pro Endurance cards because they are designed for use with dash cameras but they only go up to 128 gigabytes so there are also the Samsung Evo cards that go up to 256 and more so i definitely look into the biggest memory card you can find. Here on the side you can see the power button, reset button, power input, and rear input. You'll notice that those are different plugs. The power is a standard mini USB and the rear is a 
a proprietary connection so you have to use the cable that comes with it. Now the rear camera swivels up and down, doesn't swivel left or right. What's interesting is it does have a detach, uh, detachable plate like the front camera. I'm not quite sure why you would need to use that, but you know it's sort of nice if you need to take it down for some reason. Then again there's that proprietary connector. I will say the one thing I didn't really like about this camera is this cable is really thick. Uh, let's see if I can compare it to... This is a standard USB-C cable that came with one of my Samsung Galaxy Notes. So you can see it is... This one's pretty thick. Now to help with installation they do give you this little pry tool so you can use this to get up under your headboard and to get the cable up in there. So that's nice that they include this. A lot of companies include s stuff like this now. You're also going to get some extra adhesives. I've already used one of these extra ones um, and like I said this does come with two front plates so it's nice to have some of those. Do have a data cable just for data transfer if for whatever reason you want to connect the camera to a computer. But you also get this uh, USB micro SD card reader so you can just use this to connect your computer if you want to transfer files to your PC or Mac. Now to power it, you're just going to get the standard 12 volt plug. It does have a USB port so you can charge a cell phone while your camera is running. And while I pointed out this camera does have a power button, just like any other good dash camera, as soon as this gets power, the camera is going to start up and start recording as soon as you start your car and when you shut your car off it'll turn off so you don't have to worry about that now if you want to use this camera for parking mode you would have to plug this into a battery that's always on or you would have to buy the hardware and kit which I do not have to test now in terms of video quality I do think the video quality on this camera is pretty good now you have to take into account that this is a three channel camera so it takes a lot more processing power to record three full HD video sources and the front camera of course is 1440p so it's more than just three full HD so when you compare it to something like the Viafo A119 V3 you might notice that, that camera does look better but that camera doesn't have a interior camera and a rear camera built in too so take that into account I do believe that the front camera does look pretty good it looks adequate maybe even better than average it looks very detailed and I think most people are going to be very happy with the quality of the front camera during the day. Now at night, it of course, as all cameras do, takes a little bit of a hit, but I think the brightness and exposure levels look pretty good, especially when it when you're stopped at a stoplight or something, you can read signs clearly. And of course, when you're driving, it gets a little blurrier, but that's pretty much every camera out there. So again, I think this is uh, at least as good as average or if not maybe even better than average. Now the rear camera also looks pretty good. Again it has quite a lot of detail and I think most people are going to be pretty satisfied with how you're able to read license plates from cars nearby you. But you have to remember reading small text on a license plate at high speed on any camera can be very hard. But on this camera I do think again it's uh, better than average if if not at least as good as most cameras. At night rear cameras always struggle even more than the front camera because you don't have headlights to light up the road behind you but what I think is important is whether or not you can read license plates for any cars that pull up behind you in case someone rear ends you and tries to flee so again this camera is definitely going to get the job done. Now the interior camera is more than adequate because just being able to see what's happening in your car is all that's really important. So honestly you could have 720p on the inside and it would be good enough but you know it's nice to see the 1080p. Gives you lots of detail and of course at night the infrared light allows you to see even in complete darkness. So rideshare drivers I think you're all gonna really enjoy this feature. Now earlier in the video I mentioned the Wi-Fi app the Wi-Fi app is pretty well developed. It does allow you to watch a live stream. Now here I am only showing just the front end interior camera because I didn't have the rear hooked up but normally you would see both the interior and rear cameras 
in the corner of the video. What's nice about having this Wi-Fi app is you can view files from your phone so you don't have to watch it on the little tiny screen if you were in an accident. One thing I didn't like though is they don't show thumbnails unless it's just loading really really slow. The thumbnails never showed up on my screen but when you click one of the videos it pretty much starts playing instantly. This is much quicker than a lot of other apps that I've used so I was very happy with how fast it starts playing the video. Of course you can download these to your phone in case you needed to save a copy too so you don't have to mess around with your memory card. And the other nice feature of course is you have the full menu of settings for the camera built into the Wi-Fi app so you can change any of the settings from your phone so you don't have to mess around with a tiny screen up near the top of your windshield if you don't want to. It's a lot easier to just sit back in your car seat and be able to use your phone to change any settings you need. Currently this camera on Amazon is $250. There's a coupon to get $30 off if you uh, click that little button. Not really sure why Amazon requires you to click those links but you know there it is. Um, I'll post a link down in the description to where you can purchase this if you are interested. Now $250 does seem like quite a bit but again it comes back to the fact that this has three channels and they're all pretty good quality video on top of the really cool sleek form factor and the Wi-Fi I think this is definitely a great option if you're looking for a three channel system. I'll provide a link down in the description to my Vantru N4 review also. But honestly if I were to choose between one of these I would definitely choose this one just because I, I prefer this style uh, wedge shaped design. I think it's easier to hide behind your rear view mirror and still have this part or the infrared camera watching inside of your car because I don't want people to see the camera and want to break into my car and steal it. So guys, I hope this video review was helpful. If it was or if you like any of my other videos, I always appreciate if you hit like and subscribe to my channel. I do have more reviews coming. I have a couple cameras that I am testing. So as usual, drive safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.